Mr. Millicom, how do you, as they say of now, describe yourself? Are you uh, a writer or an entertainer? Um, I don't think I come under either category because I've never set myself to either with, with a great deal of prolificity. Uh, I can't spell for a start. I presume that's the cardinal tools of a, 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 a writer is to spell, and I can't spell. Uh, I'm very frightened, so uh, you need a lot of courage to be a comic, uh, an entertainer. So I fall down on both of these. I don't know why I have either of these labels you on me. You do, in fact, write, however. I do write, yes. But uh, did you always want to be a writer? No, I, uh, I, I, it's peculiar. Uh, for, uh, for a start, I was brought up in a household where there was only one book, uh, Robinson Crusoe. Uh, my father was a, a, an Irishman and a, a romantic, and uh, he was frightened of the world, and he escaped into this book, and he took me with him. Uh, it's the only book I ever read, and consequently I've all my life been an island, sort of literary island. I, I've nev never been touched or tainted by outside literary efforts at all. I've, I've never read many books, I've never been to many plays, uh, nor have I seen many films, you know, so I'm rather a freak's the only word you can put on You've, me. Uh, F-R-E-K, freak. <laughs> <laughs> you've now, you've now, however, written a play, at least with John Antrobus. With John Antrobus. Yes, yes, I can't help feeling, uh, I don't want to be, I can't help feeling that a play is a very long thing uh, for a man with your kind of mind. Yes, I, I, I'm afraid that uh, both John and I found the pressure great, uh, mostly me. I, I, I don't like uh, sitting down and writing. It drives me stark raving mad. I, I like things to be done quickly. Well, I like the idea, you know. I like just to think of the idea. I think, well, that's it. I put it out of the way. How can I uh, put it? Um, uh, uh, for instance, uh, let me say, uh, um, a rocket. Uh, let us suppose that there's um, a rocket. Uh, first English astronaut, that's right. First English astronaut is going to be fired into space. This is about 1980. And the, the British government have bought on the HP an American second-hand rocket. And they've drawn lots f f to who goes in it. And uh, it's a Captain Martin Thrust who goes in it. And he's, it's morning, it's dawn, you see, on Wandsworth Flats. And this rocket's there. And uh, um, the BBC are there. And it says, a wonderful day here. And the, um, as I stand here, I can see the great iron gantry being pulled back from the rocket with its three-stage uh, missiles in place. And any moment now, the, um, uh, the cord which contacts him to the ground will be shed, and he will have no contact with the ground except by radio or tele telephonic communication. Uh, I believe the countdown has started, so we ought to go to the ground control, which is under the aegis of the American National Command over here. So, yeah, the ground control here. Uh, the countdown is starting now, and uh, in the, in the, from the three minutes to one now, starting in the countdown now. Ten, nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, uh, what's that term? Okay. Uh, one, <laughs> zero. And here from outside the launching pads, he seems to be taking off quite nicely, this great big white bird in the early morning here, with the Londoners going to work on their buses <laughs> in the background. And she's taken off with this great, great red flame spreading from the bottom of the titanium uh, liquid is, is being jettisoned now, and the tripartite rockets are coming off, and she's going up, she's going up pretty nicely now. I said, imagine she's, oh, she must be a mile up now, going very fast. Oh, it must be on course. Yes, you're absolutely right, John. I should say that uh, at this moment, Captain Martin Thrust's body weight should be around about 700 pounds. That's nine times uh, gravity G. And uh, he should be now in contact with the uh, radio control on the ground. And ground control calling, uh, calling uh, Captain Martin. So this, this idiot, that's he. <laughs> like this, I mean, Captain, uh, Captain Martin answering, uh, um, uh, Britannia one answering, over. Uh, hello, Captain Martin. Captain Martin, uh, to report your condition, I am fine. I feel fine. A-OK. -okay. A-OK. -okay. Travelling over Africa at the moment. Over. Uh, hello, Captain Martin. Hello, Captain Martin. Stay tuned to this beam. Stay tuned to this beam. Over. Over. <laughs> mm. And suddenly, on, the, uh, on, the, on his intercom, you get this... <laughs> hello, ferrets. Hello? <laughs> hello. Britannia one calling ground control. Hello, Harrod. <laughs> hello, Harrod. Hello. Hello, get off the line, madam. Hello, ground control. Britannia one calling ground control, over. Hello, Harrod, I've got a card for you. Here's some... 
Ground control calling uh, Britannia One. Britannia Wallo. It goes on. Let's go on, you see. What happens to finally the chap says, hello, um, 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 Welbeck Exchange calling. Uh, he said, hello, hello, Welbeck Exchange. Uh, get off the line. He said, hello, uh, well, you have any trouble here? <laughs> hello, Harrods here. Harrods Grocery Button. Get off the line, Harrods Grocery Department. Hello. Ground control calling Britannia One. Why have you not answered? Uh, heavy interference, heavy interference here. Hello, ground control calling. What is your exact position? I'm laying on my back with my knees drawn up. <laughs> <laughs> well, finally, this, this chap goes on and on. And penultimately, he, he can't, he loses contact with the ground and, and this woman comes on. He said, hello. And she said, is that Harrods? He said, yes, yes, it's Harrods. Don't go away. Uh, it is Harrods, yes. And, and he said, oh, grocery, he said, groceries here, yes. He said, could you take it all? Yes, I'll take it all. He's desperate to get back to the ground. He said, yes. He said, two broiled chickens, yes. A half a pound of potatoes, yes. Yes. Uh, what? Broccoli? Yes, plenty of broccoli, yes. And green peas, the little ones, yes. Fine, splendid. What do I suggest for our... Cheese, yes. I should take cheese if I will, yes. Now look, madam, can you do me a favour? Can you get on to... Can you get on to Midland Hall Rocket Base and ask them to fire the re-entry rockets on Britannia One? Can you do that for me? Over? Uh, well, uh, I'll get a pencil and paper. Yes, don't go away. I, I won't go away, no. I won't go away. Hello? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, have you got to eat bro broccoli? <laughs> she goes on like this, perhaps. Uh, so I like this. Thank you, lads. Thank you for the laughter. Yeah, uh, I don't quite... <laughs> well, that's the rough idea, you know. Yes. You can say it quicker, you know. You got the idea, did you? all get the idea, no? I don't quite know how to, um... Well, I'll just press straight on. Please do. The, uh... <laughs> the, um... <laughs> the thing I was going to say and ask you about five minutes ago was... Uh, that there's a, a considerable difference, it seems to me, between your great public pronouncements, yes. savage yes. statements against the BBC and against commercial television and against uh, the government, uh, against uh, the Harris, world. Yes, right, Harris, yes. But uh, in fact, uh, uh, all these goon shows and so on, uh, they're very gentle, aren't they? All these verses, you're very anti, yes. you're not, you're non-satirical in your work, but no. you project a great satirical front. Well, now, I'm not an intellectual, therefore I cannot write satire. Uh, I feel violently against about things, terribly violently, but I'm not a violent person. I've never struck... Oh, I struck one bloke in my life, that's all. But I've never struck a, 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 a more than one boy in my life, at a time, that is. And uh, <laughs> I, consequently, what I say is the reverse of impact, but it has this... this it rebounds twice as strong. You know what I mean? No, I don't. Because well, what you, you know the what? Mona Dam? Yes. Now, if they'd have dropped a, a bomb right against the Mona Dam, it didn't do the job. They had to hit it and bounce it up again. This extra impetus gave the trick, you know. That's what I'm trying to say. My thing is, they, they say, oh, jolly funny. The girl went next and said, wait a minute, was that jolly funny? He had some pretty, you know, he pointed the finger at me. You know, the little clerks they say, wait a minute, he was doing a thing about the Ministry of Folks. And they said, that was me. But they laugh at the time. But they reflect it. It's a reflective sort of humour. Yes. You know, it's it's not a, it's a, well. What, what can I say? Nothing. I think it's I think it's I think it's milder than that, Spike. However, I mean, I think it's yes. very funny. And oh God, ask me some more questions. Anything about the book? I'm dying Which to book? do. I got a bit about the book. Pacoon. I'm writing a novel called Pacoon, and in it I experiment with dimensionalism. Uh, I have a chap lying on the grass, an Irishman. He's lying down on the book like this. It's a hot day, and Milligan lay on his back, his head against the, the shadow of his cap, lost in his eyes. And suddenly, in a, in a moment of weakness, Giacomo Kenyatta had once said, all handsome men are slightly sunburned, and he ought to know. So, so, so Milligan sits up. Milligan sits up. He sees says, I think, oh, it's, God, it's real scorching today. So I think I'll bronze me limbs. That's what I'll do. I'll bronze me limbs. And he rolled his trousers kneeward, revealing the like of two thin white hairy affairs of the leg variety. <laughs> he looked at them with some dissatisfaction. Holy Christ, he said. What are these? What are these things then? What are these things then? They're your legs. Legs? <laughs> legs, he said. Whose legs? Well, they're your legs, I said in my capacity as author. Author? Author? Did you write these legs? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did, I said. Well, I don't like them. Holy <laughs> I don't like these legs at all. He said, just, did you write your legs? <laughs> I said, no. He said, ah, you didn't write your legs. Oh, no. You got, you got a good leg writer to write your legs, and then you write this pair of crappy old legs for me like this. <laughs> so I don't like it. And so it goes on. Mr. Mr. Milligan, you're a writer, all right. And as far as I'm concerned, long may you flourish. All right.